Good morning, welcome to Trinity Baptist Church once again. We're continuing uh, with our series looking at why we do what we do. Uh, and this week we're looking specifically at why we give. Why it is that as a church we take up an offering uh, each Sunday. Now I realise that this can be a bit of a tricky subject to talk about. Um, we often feel uncomfortable, don't we, talking about money. And we treat it as a sort of private, personal thing. Um, especially, I think, in this country, more so than other parts of the world. Um, I remember not too long ago, uh, someone was sharing with me that they just had a promotion at work. And as part of that conversation, they shared with me what their new salary was going to be. Uh, and I recall being quite shocked, not because of the amount that they earned, although it was certainly a decent amount, um, but just because it's not really a detail that we share with other people very often, if at all, is it? Like I say, money is just not something we discuss very much. There's also an added danger, I think, when we speak about it in the context of church, because there's a perception sometimes that churches are always asking for money, um, especially within Baptist churches and, and others outside of the sort of Anglican and Catholic denominations. Um, because all of our money to pay our bills, to run our activities, to maintain the building and to employ the minister as well as other staff comes from what we're able to raise ourselves. And that is primarily from the weekly offerings as well as uh, from being able to rent out rooms in the building and things like that. And so I guess um, on a really kind of practical level, we might say that we give because it enables the church to function. And as a church, we might say that we take up an offering because without it, we wouldn't be able to pay our bills. But actually, I think there's so much more to it than that. There are more reasons than just uh, keeping the church afloat or paying my salary, um, as important as that might be. And the first thing to say is that although we might not like to speak about money, the Bible actually has quite a lot to say on the subject. Over 2,000 Bible verses talk about our personal resources compared with uh, approximately 500 on prayer and fewer than that on faith. In fact, uh, about 15% of everything Jesus taught was on the topic of money and possessions. That's more than his teachings on heaven and hell combined. So there's a lot of insight that we can gain on the subject of money and possessions by looking at scripture. And in particular, I think we can find many good reasons for why we give. Firstly, uh, we give because we're created in the image of the God who gives. We each have within us a, a divine piece of DNA which radiates grace. See, logically, it makes little sense that a pensioner walking around his garden could raise over £30 million for the NHS and for charities associated with it. But yet, when we see a need and are inspired by a person, our default is an urge to give. There's something sort of deep within us that wants to join in with the generosity. And this tendency to give, although sometimes buried kind of deep within us, is, I think, fueled by God's grace. God's grace overflows outrageously to us. And when we feel it, we want to be part of it. In 2 Corinthians 8 and 9, Paul describes this phenomenon when he explains how and why he is carrying a donation from the churches in Macedonia to the church in Jerusalem, which is suffering in a famine. He frames uh, the generosity of the churches as an act of sharing in God's grace. The churches think of their giving as a, a demonstration of God's grace. They get to take part in grace. They experience the privilege of sharing in this service. And part of their reason for giving is rational. Paul wants there to be equality. Those who have a surplus care for those who are struggling. And then when and if the situations are reversed, the help will flow the other way. 
but it's also about being able to participate in and demonstrate God's grace at work in the church and in the world. Another reason why we give is as an expression of gratitude to God for all that he has done and all that we have. As Eugene Peterson in the message translates 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verses 12 and 13, you show your gratitude through your generous offerings to your needy brothers and sisters and really toward everyone. You see, we give because God first gives to us, both of himself and in the many blessings that we enjoy. And then in budgeting for regular giving, rather than just giving out of what is left when we've indulged all of our wants and desires, we're reminded to see that, that God is the ultimate provider of all that we have. And that's something of a shift from the kind of accepted worldview of money and possessions. The worldview that says that we've got to earn what we get. And so it's good to be reminded periodically that God is the ultimate provider of all things. Because if I don't recognise that, if I don't recognise God as the ultimate provider of all things, if I buy into the worldview that says I earn all I have, that it's mine and I provided it, then it affects how I see and how I'm willing to use my money and my possessions and my time. It also, I think, affects how I see other people. You see, if we earn all we have, then the key to having more becomes just to work harder, doesn't it? And that then leads us to see those in need as being lazy or lacking in some way, and eventually to a, a dehumanising of those people, with words like scroungers and parasites being applied to people who are just in some way less fortunate than I am and perhaps who just didn't have the opportunities and openings that I take for granted. And that reframing of how we view our money and possessions is not just about gratitude, but it's also, I think, an invitation to be set free from the prevalent worldview. It's an invitation to stop counting the costs and benefits and rewards of our actions and instead to live from a sense of abundance and blessing. You see, so often we live out of a sense of scarcity, an almost unshakable conviction that there isn't enough. There's not enough time, not enough money, not enough prestige, not enough resources, not enough recognition. In a famous uh, speech to graduating students, um, David Foster Wallace, the postmodern novelist who died in 2008, said, if you worship money and things, if they are where you tap uh, real meaning in life, then you will never have enough. Never feel you have enough. But as we're encouraged to give, Instead, we're moved to look at the abundance of what we have and not the scarcity. And in doing so, we're invited to be set free from the fear of not having enough and to see others not as competitors for scarce resources, but as partners, even siblings, commissioned by God to distribute the riches of God's goodness and grace. Giving, uh, as one writer describes it, is the view through the bars. It flies a flag uh, for freedom. Giving jams open the cell door and coaxes us out. Giving breaks the power of money. In one of the parables that Jesus tells, uh, a farmer who is blessed with more crops than he can fit into his barn, he's so motivated by this fear of not having enough of not being able to uh, enjoy the fruits of what he's produced, that he decides to tear down his barns and to build bigger ones into which uh, to store his harvest. However, uh, having done so, in the story he then dies and God declares him a fool, saying, this very night your life is being demanded of you and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? 
there's a, a, an implication within the parable that the man's problem is not so much his wealth, but his isolation from others. Consider the little conversation that he has with himself. What should I do for I have no place to store my crops? I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink and be merry. You see, the conversation is not just to himself. It's also about himself and only himself. There's no evidence that there is anyone else in his life, anyone else that he should care about, anyone else uh, who might have contributed to or benefit from this bountiful harvest. Instead, confronted with the blessing of an abundant harvest, all he can think about is what he should do to make sure that he gets the most out of it so that he can live comfortably into his old age. However, in the end, not only is he not immune to death, but he will die alone. And all that he has stored up will not comfort or protect him, nor will it go to others who loved and respected him and can put it to good use. But instead, it will all turn to dust in the wind. In giving, I think we're encouraged to build community instead of barns. To put our love for others and for God ahead of our fear of not having enough. It's one of the reasons that giving is a, a crucial part of church membership as well as uh, membership of other groups. You see, in giving towards a common cause, whether financially or through our time or expertise, we're invited to play our part. And in doing so, we're drawn further into that community, which in turn is then made stronger as each part participates in and contributes to the efforts of the whole. Finally, for today, we give because giving is good for us. And I know you're thinking, well, you would say that, wouldn't you? But it's true. Studies have shown that uh, two surefire ways to increase our happiness levels and sort of general well-being is to show gratitude and generosity. And do you know what? Giving is an easy way to do both of those in one simple action. The Bible talks about us being blessed when we give. And down the years, some have kind of taken that to mean that God will increase our wealth when we first give. And to be sure, there are some stories where that seems to be the case. I remember uh, a friend of mine when we were working as volunteers on a gap year project uh, who felt moved to put in his last uh, £10 into the offering at church one week, only to get home and find that someone had put a cheque for £100 through his door whilst he was out. But I don't think that that is the promise that God makes to us. This is not a, a get rich quick scheme. We're not always going to be blessed financially when we give. As I found out when I kept trying to give my money away following my friend's story in the hope that I would be similarly blessed. But that's not to say that we're not blessed when we give. You see, it's a strange phenomenon that buying a gift for someone else makes us happier than buying something for ourselves. That giving away money or time or expertise brings more joy than keeping it to ourselves. And showing gratitude impacts us even more than the person that we thank. You know what, it's true. We may still have money troubles. We still have to learn about how to deal with bills and debt and savings. But even in the midst of that, we can still be blessed by our giving. And at this point, it's perhaps worth saying that as a church, we believe that so much um, that we practice what we preach. It's why we give away a percentage of our income each year to other charities and organisations. It's why we run projects such as the Food Bank and support others, both within our local community and further afield. Because when we give, we're connected to God and to one another. When we give, we 
break the power of money and we're set free from the fear of scarcity. And when we give, we are blessed in ways that we never even expected. Let's pray. Lord God, you alone are the source of every gift, of the vast array of our universe and of the mystery of each human life. We praise you and we thank you for your great power and your tender, faithful love. Everything we are and everything we have is your gift. And after having created us, you have given us into the keeping of your son, Jesus Christ. And so now, Lord, fill our hearts with your love and bind us together as a community of faith, connected to you and to one another. And Lord, we commit ourselves to be good stewards of the gifts entrusted to us, to share our time, our talent and our material gifts as an outward sign of the treasure that we hold in Jesus. Amen.